What's up guys and girls, today we are going to go over the newly released Amazon Q Developer CLI. Why is it such a big deal? How can you connect MCP tools with it? So this blog is great, but it doesn't showcase how to connect to different MCP tools. So in today's video, I'm gonna demo you how to connect to Kubernetes MCP tools and using that, how to deploy workload in your Kubernetes cluster. Also, what are the advantages? All right, let's get started. So let's go through a little bit of a theory, then we'll jump into the demo, okay? By the way, for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Raj, I'm a principal solutions architect working at AWS, also a best-selling author, mentor, and teacher. So at this point, if you've been following my channels, you should know what is MCP, right? If you are not, then you should click that subscribe button to keep up to date. A brief description. Uh, using MCP or model context protocol, a MCP host, which is running a large language model, can connect to different tools such as Kubernetes or AWS tools like AWS cost uh, analyzer tools or documentation tools, etc. You, the user, sends a command, let's say deploy Nginx in my Kubernetes cluster. This MCP host knows, oh, I have connection to this Kubernetes tool, so it's going to go use that tool and it can run the commands for you. You can interact with it in natural language. You do not have to copy paste and run the commands in terminals yourself. It can debug, all that good stuff, okay? How do you connect to these different tools? Using MCP client, connecting to a MCP server, so there will be a different server for different tools. So you'll have a different MCP server for Kubernetes, different MCP server for AWS tools, etc. And this part is standardized. That's the beauty of MCP. Previously, you will have a client here or a code here, C-L-I-E-N-T. You have to write the API code to connect to this tool. And for different tools, you have to do different coding and all that stuff, ugly. With MCP, and I'll show you in demo, all you need to do is connect to the server in a standard way. For any tools, you do it in a standard way. And this MCP server has all the logic to connect to this underlying Kubernetes tool. That makes life much simpler. Okay, so in a previous video, we showed a demo how using an MCP host like Klein, which works with Visual Studio Code, you can fix complex issues, right? Like crash loop back off or image pull error, etc. Check that video if you want to. I'll give the link up top. Okay, and how does it have access to your Kubernetes cluster? Because your Kubernetes cluster is running in the terminal in Visual Studio Code, right? With kubeconfig, AWS configure, all that stuff. So now, instead of using Klein, you can use Amazon QCLI. So previously, the Amazon QCLI did not have the capability to add different MCP tools. So it did not have MCP capability. With this release today, now we can connect to MCP tools. By the way, this, this feature just came out today and I'm releasing it at like, 10 o'clock at night, so I'm recording it. So if this video is helpful, please show some love, like the video, put some comments so that this video spreads and I can do more videos like this for you guys and girls. With Amazon QCLI, you do not really need any IDE. Like you can use it with the Visual Studio Code, the terminal in Visual Studio Code. But if you just want to use your Mac terminal, you can just do that as well. And then using the kubeconfig file, it will connect to the Kubernetes cluster. All right, at this point, let's jump in and do a demo. Okay, one awesome thing is, uh, so for those of you who have used Klein, you have to select LLM. So if you select Bedrock, Anthropic, Cloud 3.7, it's impossible to do anything. So if I say, um, how many Kubernetes pods am I running? So it's gonna time out. It's gonna say, hey, 3.7, um, I don't have any capacity, da 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 da, right? And even with 3.5, it throttles a lot. However, with newly released uh, Q Developer CLI, it gives away free access to Cloud 3.7, which is awesome, okay? Uh, so as long as your AWS configure is set, which is going to account where you have Bedrock running, you don't have to pay anything. As long as you have the model 3.7 enabled, you are good. I was so fed up with it, so basically, instead of using Bedrock, I actually purchased uh, some capacity from Anthropic itself, right? And that's what I have been using because I really like these MCP tools. So first things first, QCLI solves that problem. I don't have to pay Anthropic anymore. 
it's available for free, okay? By the way, if you're liking this and you want to keep up to date with the Gen AI news, the cloud news, and SEO Next Cloud interview, want to get my free cloud interview guide, sign up to my free newsletter, cloudwithraj.com slash newsletter. I'll give the description down below. Back to the video. Second is, however, there are some things you need to know. Uh, so like, you know, Klein is integrated into your IDE and then integrating MCP server is a little bit easier. So you literally just click this and then you search the MCP server, you click ins install, it's done. But QCLI, you have to do a little bit different stuff. So in today's demo, what I'm going to show is I have a Kubernetes cluster running. I'm just going to ask different things to this Kubernetes cluster, okay? So first things first, let's install this. And I'll give the link in the description. So I'm using this blog and then um, I already have the CLI installed. So let me open this in a new tab. Okay, so that one thing is currently it only works in Mac OS or Windows subsystem for Linux. So let's first install this. To install this, I will, I'm just going to run brew install Amazon Q. So if I go here, press enter. Okay, so it's gonna take uh, 20 seconds or something. Okay, so it's installed. And you can see it's installed. If you do Q dash dash version, okay, then it's going to show the version. Very important, you need to also run this AWS configure commands and make sure it's connected to your AWS account and region. And in the same region, you should have a bedrock um, cloud 3.7 enabled. So at this point, the queue is installed, but there is no MCP tools yet, okay? So this is the part that you need to pay attention to. So if I go back to the documentation, so here it says you have to put the MCP client settings in this mcp.json file under Amazon Q under this AWS, right? So let me show you how this works. So basically, so this is my mcp.json file. This is under users, ID for the machine, dot aws amazon q and then mcp.json okay so when you install uh, qcli a blank mcp.json should be created here if not you can go create one here now the important part is here you have to give the mcp tools that you want to connect i'm connecting to this kubernetes mcp server so you you, you will ask Raj, how, how do you know what to put here so to do that, you can, let's say, search Kubernetes MCP server, okay? So this is the one flux 159. So if you click this and then you scroll down, scroll down, okay. See this usage? It doesn't matter, it says Cloud Desktop. You, you basically copy this Kubernetes command NPX MCP server Kubernetes. And you have to have Node installed for this to work, right? So same thing I did, Kubernetes commands npx, mcp server. I also have Playwright running. So Playwright is a search engine. So it can use this search to go and search stuff for me. You don't want it to go and then just be limited to what's available in the LLM. Now, remember the queue chat is not running yet, right? Because I'm just working in the terminal. To run queue chat, you can type queue chat, okay? And then because I have these two things on my MCP, it's installed. Um, so let me remove the Klein window. Okay, this is on. So big one big difference between Klein and this QCLI is a lot of you say that you wanted to just do this in the CLI. A lot of you are like a CLI person. So you did not like how in Klein, we have to do everything from this uh, agentic chat. So Q developer CLI solves exactly that, okay? So how do you know um, what tools are running? Let me make it a little bigger. So you can run slash tools, okay? And it's going to show you the MCP tools that are running. So we are running Playwright for searching, and then we are running Kubernetes, okay? All right, so I have a Kubernetes cluster running, so let me open another terminal, okay? So if I open another terminal, and if I run cube ctl get parts dash a, it should show me all the running pods that's running. We have a lot of pods running. Okay, so if I go back to my Q CLI, right? So this is the Q CLI. You could see this um, arrow here. So you can ask here in a natural language, how many 
Kubernetes pods am I running? Look, so this is doing this, that let me do that for you. And look, it's showing using tool list pods from MCP server Kubernetes, right? Learning list pods. I'll just put TTs for trust, so I don't have to do this Y every time. Just T enter. Okay, so I'm running five Kubernetes pods in the default namespace. If I have asked how many Kubernetes pods I'm running in all namespaces, it should show all. But at this point, let's ask it to help deploy Nginx. Can you help me deploy a Nginx deployment in a new namespace named QDemo? Look, it's showing you the reasoning, right? First, let's create the new namespace. Then we'll create the Nginx deployment in that namespace. Okay, so it created the namespace and now it's creating a create deployment with Nginx, right? With the template. So T, okay, it's also creating a service. Okay, okay, so it's saying if you want to expose this service externally, you do load balancer, etc. Now let me ask for the YAML file. Where is this Nginx deployment YAML file? Okay, so did, this did the imperative way, but we want the YAML file. Yes, please. Okay, so it shows the file. Okay, let's put T. So it created in downloads. Okay, so it's in the current directory where my terminal is open. Okay, that's good. And then it's creating for the namespace and the deployment. All right, so that's, that's pretty good. And if something is broken, so I showed in a demo how to solve a bug in a Kubernetes cluster, you could do this here the same way. All right, folks, hope this was useful. Play with it. This is the future. Let me know if you face any issues and then put it in the comments. I'll try to fix it for you. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye.